I played around with a recent build, 878-361 to be exact, of Blender 2.5. Blender 2.5 is a major rewrite of Blender, which, in my opinion, makes Blender's great user interface and experience even greater. I'd like to give you a quick tour of the startup windows and the menus to give you a sneak peek at Blender's makeover. Blender's new look is very exciting. Please remember that we're looking at 2.5 in its embryonic stage. It's not even in its pre-release stage. So not all the features that we see may make it into the final release. However, there's enough to explore so that we can get a general idea of what 2.5 will ultimately look like. I'm not going to try to build anything or see whether any of the menu choices work. I just want to give you a quick peek at 2.5 under the hood. So let's get started. Here's Blender 2.5 startup screen. Right off the bat, you'll notice a few changes. First, the button window is gone, replaced by the timeline. Second, the 3D viewport defaults to user perspective view as opposed to top view in earlier versions. In the 2.5 version, you can actually see that the cube is a cube aligned along the grid. Some things are the same. We still have the three default objects, the camera, the lamp, and the default cube. You can verify that because a small outline view window is in the upper right corner of the screen. Scrolling down will show you that the three objects are indeed in the scene. Look at the user preferences menu, which has changed somewhat. Gone are the timeline and the game menus. We have four menu items, file, add, render, and help. So is the drop down with the five default screen styles. This is replaced by a menu with a default screen called appropriately screen. You can create your own custom screens by pressing the plus key, which adds the screen name screen.001. You can delete the screen by pressing the X key right next to it. The default scene is called Scene, as in the 2.4x Blender versions. You can click on the plus button to add the scene and X button to delete it. This is a change from selecting Add New. A new menu lets you select among different rendering engines. The default, as it was before, is Blender's internal renderer. You can now select Blender Game, Povre, or install another renderer, which should, I'm only speculating, make the engine menu item selectable. A new jobs timer has been added. The information about vertices, faces, objects, layers, memory, and so on has not changed. I mentioned the small outliner window earlier. You can use the scroll bar or press control down arrow as before to toggle this window or any window for that matter to and from full screen mode. The panel at the lower right contains a number of menus. These menus change depending on the context you're in. The default is the scene panel, which has the buttons you need that are relevant to rendering the current scene. These used to be part of the world buttons. If you click on the All Scenes drop-downs, you'll see the buttons can apply to other collections of scenes and data. The menus are collapsible. Press the arrow to expand or contract. You can get full expansion or full contraction. Fully collapsed into groups, the scene groups are render, layers, dimensions, anti-aliasing, shading, output, performance, post-processing, stamp, and units. The groupings have changed from the old world settings. Look at output, for example. At the bottom is a group of icons that let you toggle among different button settings. The default is the camera icon for the scene. Next is World, which has the menu choices that are more global. Preview, World, Ambient Occlusion, Mist, and Stars. The object buttons are Transform, Relations, Groups, Display, Duplication, and Animation. Note that the default name of the cube, which is selected by default, is Name Cube. No doubt to encourage you to actually name your objects, a good habit to get into. These buttons control aspects of the selected object. Look at Transform, which controls location, rotation, and scale. Note that X, Y, and Z are assumed, so Loc X, Loc Y, and Loc Z labels are gone. Next are Constraints. From the drop-down, you can add 
these constraints, as, as you see. Next are the object data buttons grouped into normals, vertex groups, shape keys, UV texture, and vertex colors. Next are the modifiers. The modifiers are grouped into an easy to read three column list. Next to last are the material buttons with the groups that you see. And finally there are the texture buttons. Each window has, at its lower left corner, a menu from where you can change its type. We'll go into the timeline window, which currently has its menu bar displayed, and click on its window type option. A few changes right off the top. The scripts window has been renamed console, user preferences have been named info, and the action editor has been renamed dope sheet. I'm sure there are other changes, and even some that may not make it into the, uh, into the final release. And we'll click on one, and you can kind of you can see that the the menu options change. I hope you enjoyed our sneak preview of Blender 2.5. It looks like the best is only going to get better. So happy blending, and see you next time.